It may just be one of the biggest days in K-State football history that doesn't involve an on-field win because K-State has landed the highest-rated recruit in school history. Lincoln Cure of Goodland is a Wildcat, the number 27 player in the country, the number two tight end, the number two player in the state of Kansas in the on-three industry ranking. Lincoln Cure, he is in. He is going to be a Wildcat a huge addition to the 2025 class for K-State. And now you look at the big picture and you think of in two of the last three years, K-State has landed two of the most sought-after recruits in the state of Kansas history in terms of Avery Johnson at quarterback and now the type of athlete that Lincoln Cure is and throw into the mix that via the transfer portal, you ended up still getting Dylan Edwards from the class of Kansas. K-State already has a four-star offensive lineman from the state in with Brock Heath in this class. It's just another highlight that K-State, they have the right staff at the right time. The state of Kansas is producing talent at a level that they really never have consistently, and K-State has the staff in place to make sure that they can get these key guys to stay home, and that's what Lincoln Cure is. Yeah, I think that it would be a massive understatement to say that it's a big recruiting win because this is this is one that I think kind of changes – kind of how K-State is perceived. I mean, you look around at the rest of the Big 12, no other team has a five-star prospect committed uh, now that Oklahoma, Texas officially in the SEC today. So nobody else has a five-star commitment, and it's kind of like last year when uh, Texas Tech landed Micah Hudson, the five-star wide receiver. They were the only team. So I think that kind of carries a cachet. And like you said, it, it's not just Lincoln Cure. It's not just Brock Heath. I don't even think it's just Avery Johnson and Dylan Edwards. I mean, we you can look back last class. Gus Hawkins is one of the top. I think he's in the top 12 of all-time K-State commits. And that's another in-state win where it seemed kind of just ho-hum at the time because K-State was his only offer, but Gus Hawkins ends up being ranked really, really high at the end and ends up being a top 12 commitment of all time. So I think it's just kind of the perfect storm of K-State having the right coaches in place and really hitting their stride on the recruiting trail. And this is this is just another example, and I think that it's a big-time example because I don't think that a lot of people nationally really gave K-State a big chance when they saw kind of where Lincoln Cure was rated and kind of how that recruitment tracked because remember K-State offered him, I believe it was June 10th of last year, and at that time, he was kind of a, a nobody, and nobody really knew anything about him. You know, he played four games as a sophomore in high school because of an injury. And then case eight offers, and then you get to, I think it was October, December, or October, November, December, January, and that's when, like, the Alabamas and Oregons of the world came knocking. And I think that that's kind of when a lot of people nationally probably perceive that case eight was out of it. But I, I think that this was a wire-to-wire case eight win. Yeah, I mean, it, this is one that when the the offer initially came and everything, it felt like okay, K State is kind of in this thing. Like this this might be one of those deals that gets closed rather quickly, uh, or, or something along those lines. Because Lincoln Cure uh, announced his offer from K State on June tenth. Uh, his next offer came five days later when he went to Iowa State. Uh, the next one was from Missouri, and then the next one was from KU, and that was in June. He didn't get another one that rolled in. uh, And this was the one that started grabbing attention when we got into September of 2023 and Penn State jumped in and then the floodgates were open. It's just Wisconsin, Purdue, Nebraska, Michigan, Florida, Illinois, Texas A&M, Auburn, Oklahoma State, Iowa, Oregon, Tennessee, Notre Dame, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Stanford, Dukes, uh, USC, Michigan State, Colorado, UCLA, Miami, Texas, Alabama, Louisville. They just kept coming. And then you see, okay, it's going to be a and Oregon, and then the two in-state schools that get the visits. Uh, and all the way along, it felt like K-State was in front, but they had stout competition that they had to remain in front of, and ultimately they were able to do so. In your eyes, what do you think led to them being able to stay in front this entire time and land Lincoln Cure? I think that the one thing that really kind of helped K-State stay in front the whole time was just the relationship that he had with the K-State coaches. And I think that Another part that shouldn't be ignored is K-State being the first one to offer and even recruit Lincoln Cure 
uh, because he, they were the first school to really reach out to Cure and start to kind of build that relationship even as a sophomore. So I think that you kind of see that. You see the, the relationship with the coaches. He grew up a fan of K-State, so that always helps. But it doesn't, it doesn't always mean that you're going to land the prospect just because they grew up a fan of you. Uh, but I, I think that there will be people that will say that it was close between a few of these schools and K-State. But I never really got the feeling that it was really close. I mean, people say Oregon did probably come in second. If we're going to list off who probably landed where in terms of uh, where the pecking order fell. But I never really got the feeling ever that Oregon was leading or out in front at any point, really. And I think that that kind of shows how strong of a relationship he had with the K-State coaching staff. And not even that, I mean, you kind of came, I mean, I, I at least kind of came away from the official visit with Oregon, not even really being super worried. So, I mean, I think that that kind of just shows where K-State was this entire time and and I think it's a big testament to Brian LaPac, Taylor Bratt, Matt Wells, Connor Riley, that even with losing Colin Klein, because remember, this recruitment could have been wrapped up in December. If Colin Klein stays at K-State, I think that Lincoln Cure is probably the first 2025 commitment to K-State because K-State was that far out in front and he really uh, valued that relationship that he had with Colin Klein as well that I think that there was a point where he could have been the first 2025 commitment to K-State. So then you kind of go from there, and it shows just how valuable those relationships were. And to not really don't undersell Matt Wells and Connor Riley's involvement in the recruitment, because it could have gone really south after Colin Klein decided or ended up leaving and going to Texas A&M. And I, I don't think that it really ever truly wavered with Cure about where K State stood. Yeah, I mean, and you can see some of the plays here. Like it, the athleticism and everything is is just out of this world. And you've seen not only him, you know, with what he's done as a receiver, but also playing defense for Goodland and tracking guys down. But it, you're right, the relationships is such a big thing, and it feels like basically instantly after the the Wells and Riley hires were were made and in, into their positions. We saw the the full court press on. They did everything they could to immediately reestablish that relationship with K State, and uh, it it worked out for them with Lincoln Cure. And I I'm with you. I think at the end of all of this, it only would have felt close because you're like K State is going to win a five star battle with Oregon. You know, like I I didn't even really factor Texas A and M into this. I think this was really a two horse race in K-State and Oregon, and K-State had, uh, you know, a couple of legs lead on Oregon, and it was just, are they going to be able to cross the finish line, or are they going to get tired? And they didn't get tired. They, they finished it off, and they were able to bring him in. Now, in terms of as a prospect and, and what he will be as a player, uh, what should K-State fans expect from Lincoln Cure? I think that as a player – he can be really, really special, obviously, with the ranking that he has. But I think that if you are wanting him to play right away, I think that expectations kind of need to be tempered a little bit there. I just think that he is a little bit more raw than his ranking is. And people have to remember rankings are a lot of times, especially for the top prospects, are more of what you can be than what you are but i think that he can be really really special and even play a little bit his true freshman season but i i wouldn't bank on him being like this bona fide come in and start right away kind of player because you gotta remember he's playing at, at goodland and that's a smaller school in the state of kansas and he potentially might not be an early enrollee either so i think that that's kind of another thing that you have to factor in and it'll be kind of how well and how fast he comes up to speed. But there are going to be times where it's going to be hard to keep him off the field because he can do stuff like this. And I think, yeah, that I mean, his, yeah, go ahead. I think that his, I think that his ultimate ceiling is to be kind of like a, a Kyle Pitts type of tight end uh, that he was at Florida. 
I know that people kind of get scared when I say Kyle Pitts and they think of the NFL version. You have to remember that the college version of Kyle Pitts was a top five pick in the NFL draft and was kind of this new wave of hybrid tight end wide receivers. And I think that no, I, I, this is another story, but the Kyle Pitts NFL thing, I think, is just because he has an organization that can't use him correctly. They but can't I, use Bijan Robinson correctly. So what do you what do you expect from him? Yes. Yeah, so I look, think that if you kind of get that, that Kyle Kyle Pitts version of at Florida, I think that that's what cure is. Yeah, I mean, and think about we just saw Ben Sennett. I mean, obviously a great athlete, made plays left and right the last two seasons for K State, but Ben Sennett was a different type of tight end build when he came out of school. I mean, Lincoln Cure is 6'5", 210. Uh, ben Sennett, his last profile in high school said he was 6'4", 250. So, you know, if you, if you can envision the types of plays that Ben Sennett made at his size, Lincoln Cure is much more like you're saying. He's more of that Kyle Pitts style where he's, he's just basically a receiver, but he's got the size and the muscle – to be a tight end and you can use him in so many different ways. Like it's just going to be a lot of endless possibilities. And I think with you saying, you know, it's going to be really tough to not keep an athlete like that um, off the field. I, there will certainly, I think be a, a an interest in K state and they're not going to say just because you're a true freshman tight end doesn't mean that you're not going to see the field uh, in 2025. If you can be used, you'll be used. And we've seen them use, do that already with, you know, obviously Jace Brown, played as a as a true freshman last year and I don't think it would be that level but we've seen guys get those opportunities because if you've got the talent they're going to get you out on the field because the staff has always been concerned with just getting guys that can be an athlete at the big 12 level number one it's easier to be an athlete at the big 12 level now given that Texas and Oklahoma are out of the league but also like Lincoln Cure is an athlete that can hang on any level of college football right now and could certainly uh, provide something for you. So it's going to be fascinating to see what it looks like for him uh, when he gets to gets to yeah. K State. And there's no pressure there either because the assumption is is that Garrett Oakley is going to slide into Ben Sennett's spot and do just fine this year and be ready next season as well. Yeah, I think the the other thing that you kind of have to temper expectations right away is that. I think that tight end and offensive line are probably the two hardest positions for a true freshman to come in right away and play. So I think that it'll be fascinating to see how Cure is brought along because I think that there's still a possibility where he might not redshirt, but it might be he plays in the final like six, seven uh, games that K-State plays in the 2025 season and, instead of like the first, instead of like just playing the first five and not redshirting. But it'll be fascinating to see how he's brought along because if he can get up to speed and get the size up, I think there's no real problems. Uh, the one thing, too, that kind of hasn't been talked about a lot because he just kind of said it in passing to me uh, when we were at the Sharp Combine. I asked what he weighed in at uh, or what he was weighing in at now and how big he wants to be before he gets on campus. And he said right now he's in that like 220 range. And by the time that he said that he stepped onto a college campus, he wants to be about 240. So I'm really interested to kind of see how that tracks and how much weight and how much muscle he puts on between now and next June or even next January. But I, I think that it's really important to kind of, I don't want to say temper expectations right away for a five star, but I think that you kind of had, he has a lot of things that, you can't teach which will get him on the field, but he also has a few things that I think he's a little bit more raw than people think. Yeah, I I think that's I think that's fair. I, I the expectation should never be for a true freshman of any breed to be on the field year one and immediately contributing. Uh, there are just some outliers out there, and it's also again dictated by positional need. And like we just said, K State. I think they view that they they don't have a positional need for a number one tight end going into 2025. I think they assume that Garrett Oakley is going to be really good, but like you said, you get you get the information learned, and then you can translate that in with the athleticism you have, and there would be an avenue to maybe see cure uh, in that back half of the the first year. And like uh, I mentioned, Jace Brown earlier because he's a pass catcher, and because we kind of saw a similar story. He 
He got one ball late, you know, in, in the blowout against SEMO. And then he didn't catch another pass until the game against Texas Tech. And then from that point on, he was K-State's best receiver the rest of the year. And that was one of those where it probably took some time to get up to speed and also get some trust gained. Uh, but he was around long enough. He he learned how it went. And uh, by the end of the year, I mean, he caught 14 balls over the last three games of the season for K-State. Uh, and and they were some big ones at that. And a touchdown in the Pop-Tarts Bowl against NC State. He had that big one to start the game at KU that set up the touchdown drive to kind of set the tone early. So um, there's an, there will be an opportunity there. And anytime you have that fifth star, right, the possibilities really are endless. And K-State landing Lincoln Cure is just such a massive, massive deal uh, because highest rated recruit in K-State history. His, his industry ranking keeps going up, by the way. Um, yes. I, it says 95.73 right there, but if you go check it as of this morning, it was up to 95.86, I believe. Uh, so Lincoln Cure is not done moving up the the national rankings. And uh, but when all is said and done, I, I think there's a reasonable chance he ends up being the top player in the state of Kansas. Uh, and and who knows where he is nationally. Uh, I'll raise you one and say there is probably a better chance than not that Lincoln Cure is a consensus five star than his rating going down. Because I, yeah. I think that there's a chance that everybody kind of sees where he is at in the fall and you add in his freaky athleticism. And I mean, if you want like some hilarious, just like looking at him compared to other people, look at him on the track when he does hurdles, he's like 10 inches taller and about 60, 70 pounds heavier than everybody else. And he's still able to get first, second, third. Yeah. And then he he got first in the 110 hurdles and the 300 hurdles at state track this year. And then just turned around and got, I think he got second in the 200. So he's so fast and so athletic that I think that if you really want to see his, his athleticism on full display and you don't want to just see it on the football field, pull up some of the stuff from state track because you, you, sometimes it's a little hard to see who is who on a track. It's not with Lincoln Cure because he is about two times the size of a lot of the other track athletes. Yeah. You mentioned consensus five-star uh, on three in terms of five-star plus players. If Lincoln Cure were to get there, and that's certainly a, a strong possibility in the 2024 class, there were only 17 such players uh, in that class that had five star status from on three 24 seven rivals and ESPN. So that's the kind of player here where obviously you already know that Lincoln cure is special. Only a select few kids end up as five stars, but there's that next and kind of upper echelon where it's another special tier and uh, K state has landed a player that certainly fits the bill for it. So uh, an exciting day for K-State football. They deliver with Lincoln Cure, the highest rated commit in K-State football history. If you want more on the Lincoln Cure commitment, go over to K-State online at On3. We'll have plenty of different angles to cover this from. And also, go find some of the other content right here on the KSO YouTube page as well because we were in Goodland. We have it covered for you there. You can watch the commitment, everything else that will come from uh, an exciting day in Western Kansas. For those of us that aren't from Western Kansas, because Hutchinson is not Western Kansas to all of you snobby Johnson County elites, uh, rarely have I said a good day in Western Kansas. I think mostly it's me gripe, griping about in high school having to go to Ulysses for state golf or to watch a basketball or football game. But this was a good day in Western Kansas for K-State. And I know uh, a lot of you Western Kansas cats, you probably wake up and say that every day. but. For everybody across the state and across the country that wears purple, a pretty sweet day, and uh, it should be enjoyed. So Lincoln Cure, member of K-State's 2025 class, and uh, if you want more from Drew on what might be coming next, head over to On3 because K-State probably not done with commitments this week. We've been saying 4th of July weekend is the target to maybe jack the number up a little bit more for K-State. It's certainly going to be a possibility. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.